folks. Jeremiah the Geometry Cowboy back talking to you about linear measure. You know why the Cowboys got kicked out of class? Because they were horsing around. <laughs> First vocabulary term is a line segment. That's part of a line contained between two endpoints and can be measured from endpoint to endpoint. So here we have segment AB with a left endpoint at point A and a right endpoint at point B. Now, the difference between a line and a line segment is that a line continues on in both directions forever. It's got arrows at either end, whereas a line segment stops at both ends. It can be measured. It has a finite distance. Now, the proper notation for a line segment, you pick the two endpoints, point A and point B. You then write a line segment symbol above it. Remember when we did a line, it had arrows at both ends, but a line segment doesn't have any arrows. That tells you that it's a line segment as opposed to a line. Remember, you could also write this segment BA as opposed to segment AB. Now, betweenness of points. For any two points, A and B, on a line, there is another point C between A and B if and only if A, B, and C are collinear and AC plus CB equals AB. Okay, this is a mouthful, but it's actually pretty simple. It's saying that if you have two points, point A, and point B, and they are on a line. Point C is gonna be between A and B if C is also on that same line, they're all three of them are collinear, and the measure of segment AC plus the measure of segment CB is equal to the measure of segment AB. So basically, the sum of the two parts equals the whole, right? The measure of AC plus the measure of CB equals the measure of AB. Now, notice that I'm saying the measure of segment AC and the measure of segment CB. That's because there's no line segment symbol above this. So if there was a line segment symbol up here, I would say segment AC plus segment CB. But there is no line segment symbol up here, which means it's the measure of segment AC plus the measure of segment CB. Okay, now the next thing we're going to talk about are congruent segments. So segments that are the same measure are considered congruent segments. Now being congruent just means that they're geometrically equal. They have the same measure. So geometrically, the two segments are equal to one another. Now, instead of writing the equal sign though, if we have a segment AB and a segment CD, we write they are congruent to one another. So it's just an equal sign with a little tilde over it. That means that the two segments have the same measure. They're geometrically equal. Also note these green tick marks right here. Anytime you see tick marks, that's gonna let you know that those two figures are congruent. So tick marks means congruent. A construction is a method of creating geometric figures without the benefit of a measuring tool. Generally, only a pencil, a straight edge, and a compass are used. So we are gonna do a lot of this later on. Just know that construction refers to creating geometric figures with a compass, not the north, south, east, west one, but it looks something like this. Now you got the vocab, it's example time. Now example one says find the length of the object with the metric ruler. So here we have a metric ruler. What does that mean? It just means that it's in centimeters and millimeters. So in a metric ruler, there are 10 millimeters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10 in every centimeter. So if we're measuring this piece of rusted metal, it looks like we can see that its length is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty, thirty, one, two, three millimeters. So 33 millimeters would be the length of this piece of rusted metal. But let's just say we wanted to, instead of writing it in millimeters, we want to write it in centimeters. So how do we write that? Well, the length of this piece of rusted metal is one, two, three. Well, it's a little bit more than three centimeters. How do I write these millimeters in terms of centimeters? Again, there's 10 millimeters in every centimeter. So technically, this is three tenths of a centimeter. So the length of this piece of rusted metal, we could also write as three and three tenths of a centimeter or 3.3 .3 centimeters. Both ways are acceptable. You got a lasso on that concept? You try. Okay, we're now gonna measure the length of this bug with an inch ruler. 
So how are inch rulers different than metric rulers? Well, here, inch rulers are broken up into sixteenths of an inch, which is super weird, and it would be way better if we were on the metric system, but, you know, I don't make those decisions. Just a math teacher. So here, we start at the beginning of our antennae, which is at zero, and we go to the end of the thorax, I believe. Check with your bio teacher. Again, I'm a math teacher. We see that we have one, two, and then one sixteenth. 2 sixteenths, 3 sixteenths, 4 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths. So 2 and 5 sixteenths inches would be the length of this book. If it was 2 sixteenths, that would break down into 1 eighth. If it was 4 sixteenths, that would break down into 1 fourth. But since it was 5 sixteenths, that doesn't simplify anymore, so this is our answer. Now example two says find the measurement of segment ZB. So the measurement of segment ZB would be the measure of segment ZB, which would just be ZB without this little segment sign on the top. So where is that here? Well, ZB, the measure of ZB would be this length right here. So how do we find this? Well, we know that the entire segment, the measure of the entire segment AB would be 22.5 centimeters. And we know that the measure of segment AZ is 10.9. So if we take that 22.5 centimeters and subtract that 10.9 centimeters, we get the measure of ZB, which is, when we subtract those two numbers, 11.6 centimeters. Don't just sit there like a tumbleweed. You try. Okay, so we need to find the measure of each segment. So that would be talking about segment CA and segment AB. We need to find the measure of both of those. So how do we do that? Well, here, it looks like the measure of segment CB is going to be equal to 27 feet. And what do these little red dashes mean? Well, that means that segment CA is congruent to segment AB, which means they're going to have the same measure. So in order to find the measure of each of these, all we have to do is take that 27 feet and divide it by 2. And that should give us the measure of each of these segments. So we take 27 divided by 2, and we get the measure of segment CA, which is the same as the measure of segment AB, which is 13.5 feet. Now example three says find the measure of segment AB if point A is between C and B and if the measure of AB is equal to 4y minus 9 and the measure of CA is equal to 3y plus 5 and the measure of CB is equal to 17. That's a lot of stuff here. Okay. If they don't give you a figure, you need to draw one yourself. So we are going to draw a figure. It says find AB. So we know there's a segment AB. And it says A is between points C and B. So we're going to draw a line segment with points C and B as our endpoints. And point A is going to be between those two points. Perfect. We're then going to label what we know. We know that the measure of segment AB is equal to 4Y minus 9. So we're going to put 4Y minus 9 where the measure of segment AB is. We then know that the measure of segment CA is equal to 3y plus 5. So we put that over here with segment CA. We know that the measure of segment CB, the entire thing, is equal to 17. So we're going to label that like this. Cool. Now we're ready to solve our problem. So what is the question here? It's asking us to find the measure of segment AB. So that's right here. That would be 4y minus 9. So obviously we need to find y. That will help us figure out what the measure of segment AB is. Well, how do we do that? Well, if you recall, the betweenness of points states that I can take the measure of segment CA, add it to the measure of segment AB, and set that equal to the measure of the whole thing, right? Because the two parts added together equal the whole. So I'll take the measure of segment CA, which is 3y plus 5, add it to the measure of segment AB, which is 4y minus 9, and set that equal to the whole thing, which is 17. Now I can solve for y. So let's do that. If we combine like terms using a little bit of algebra, 3y plus 4y is going to be 7y, and then 5 minus 9 is going to give you negative 4. We then solve for y by, since it's minus 4, we add 4 to both sides. We then divide both sides by 7 to get y by itself. We get y is equal to 3. Now we're not done. We take this 3 that we got y equal to, and we plug it in for y for the measure of segment AB. Now what's the measure of segment AB? That's 4y minus 9. So we take 3, plug it in for y, and then we can simplify. What's 4 times 3? Because we've got to do that first. Order of operations, you multiply before you add or subtract. 
So what's four times three? That's 12. And then what's 12 minus nine? That's three. And that is the measure of segment AB. Now example four, it says in the graph below, suppose a segment was drawn along the top of each bar, which fruits would have congruent segments. So remember congruent segments just means that the measure of each segment would be equal. So which of these would have equal measures? Well, it looks like just oranges and strawberries, right? Because they're both four units long, meaning that they have the same measure, meaning that they would technically have congruent segments. So we would say oranges and strawberries would be the congruent segments. Strap on your boots. Time for a new try. Okay, we're using the same graph. We're drawing a line segment at the top of each bar, and it says which fruits would have segments that add up to equal the apple's segment. So what is the apple segment? That's five, okay? So we would need to figure out two segments that add together to equal five. Well, here we can see that bananas would be three, so we would need a two. Oh yeah, grapes. So bananas plus grapes would obviously equal the segment for our apples. Any other ones? Yeah, oranges and pears, right? Because four plus one also equals five. So oranges plus pears would add up to equal the segment for our apples. And then same thing with strawberries and pears, because four plus one again equals five. So those three combinations would add up to equal the length of the apple's segment. 